Hello there and welcome to another Starfield ship review video. In today's video we're going to be looking at the Spacer Raccoon, or in my case the Spacer Raccoon 2. The number that comes after the name is just the tier system, how the game does the ships. So the higher the number the better the base stats the vessel are. So in this case I have a tier 2 which means the, for instance the reactor has 23 power. A tier 1 might only be 20 and a tier 3 might be 25 power. So aesthetically the ships will be exactly the same, the only difference will be the modules will be upgraded. So as the name suggests, this is a spacer vessel, and it is based on the Mako, which is a Tayo ship. It's, I think, the one of the, if not the smallest vessels you can get in the game. It's quite a cool little ship. Uh, if anyone's interested in this sort of ship, uh, I have made... Um, a more custom version that is a little bit more streamlined and looks more you know in line so check it out on my channel i believe it's the thousand sub special anyway so into the review itself so it has a fuel of 100 which is very low uh where i found this i had to basically do the technique of getting out of my seat and fast traveling to get to uh new atlantis so yeah we're gonna have to upgrade that immediately and it's got a hold of 610 which isn't too bad for like a smaller ship like this like, obviously, it's not ideal, but with an A-Class, and because it's so small, you can kind of let it get let it away with, you know, having very low hull. It's got a cargo capacity of 200, which, again, it's not amazing. That's only coming from the from the um, the cockpit itself. So it's got an A-Class reactor with 23 power. That's not too bad, but it's obviously not too good. Uh, well, I'd recommend getting a higher-tier reactor when you can. Uh, we'll do a tear down at the end of the video and I'll show you some potential upgrades. Crew of four, which is actually quite impressive. It's got a jump range of 28 light years, which is very impressive. Like, if if it didn't have that fuel, that really low fuel, it would be phenomenal. But in that current configuration, you won't be able to jump very far. Um, it's got shields of 550, which is about average. Um, the highest A-class shield is around 900, I believe, at 850, 900, so it's not very good. And then for weaponry, it has a laser weapon and ballistic weapons. It seems like it's a pair of ballistic weapons mounted on each of those landing gear. You can just see them. And then it has a pair of laser weapons mounted on the uh, starboard side there on a horizon defense. So I'm going to be buying this ship, but that's just because when I do these reviews, I sell the ship beforehand. You can actually purchase this ship. Like I said, I sell it beforehand just so I can see the base stat without any of my perks. So in order to find this ship, the best place to go would be to fly around in some of the further out systems and you basically want to try and come across spacers they ha it's every time you jump to certain planets and systems there's like random events that can happen and usually you get attacked now the one you're looking for is the spacers will try and extort you for money they'll say we need to go on holidays and you can give them money or you can deny and they'll attack you now if you get that encounter you can kind of farm it so once you get that encounter, look to see what ships they have. Just ignore them, shoot them. Two more ships will usually show up. And then if you don't have the ship you want, just reload the autosave. And you can keep reloading the autosave. I did that to get my last couple of spacer ships. It took about 10 minutes of reloading, but eventually I got it. So yeah, that's that's one way to get it. Anyway, we're going to get a quick little uh, glamour shot. It's a really cool design. Um... I like the tile vessels. The one thing I, I'm not a huge fan of, and uh, if you do watch the custom ship version I made, the engines on the back, I just, I don't like how they look. I feel like they're very, like, they're just very awkward looking. Like, Relidine make a set of engines that, like, pretty much look like this here. It looks like that, but it's an engine. And it actually fits well with the tile aesthetic. Aside from that, it's not too bad. So we're gonna hop in, check it out. We got those fuel tanks at the back that look really big but they hold 50 each i could probably hold more fuel in my bladder so if we uh climb in the back we've got the tayo entryway really nice no med pack though which is kind of a bit interesting maybe tire like if you can afford uh if you can afford to buy this ship you can afford a doctor you don't need a med pack sorry my dog just jumped up there um so yeah interior we have ooh, we have a crew control station which is really nice my one of my favorite modules just because extra crew is it's just handy you know you can have people like big boy here who increases your uh flight speed and your carry capacity and then you've got people like omari who is a 
just one of the generic NPC. Well, he's not generic, but he can increase your shield capacity. So yeah, basically, the more crew you have, the more effective you can make, especially with these little ships. Now, obviously, if that's not your style, you can go with something more like, you know, like a workshop or maybe a captain's course. But anyway, over here, we have the docking bay, which connects to the Hope Tech docker, the one the, at the front. And behind us here, we have, that's a door. I'm a moron. I thought, <laughs> my bad. I thought I could see through the glass there. I thought that was leading to a room, but yeah, there's not a room there. <laughs> So we'll take this ladder back up and we just have a little one by one. No, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. We've got a one by one storage room. This is a Tayo storage room. And then we have the, the bridge. This is Samurai Cockpit. I've s ignored the bodies. I've said it before. Um, yeah, they're spacers. Okay. Nah. I said it before. Uh, I really like this cockpit from like a like from a design perspective like you've got nice views really cool the only thing i don't like is these seats so there's two main reasons why i don't like these seats so one they're really far forward which means that sam is going to demonstrate when you're flying your crew are really close to you so they're going to constantly talk to you and that can get a bit annoying especially when you're trying to have conversation with like other ships and the other thing is i feel like a glorified chauffeur like i feel like these if these were back here you know, sitting at the back, it'd be a lot better. Or even, like, like something that might be a little bit over the top. But if any of you guys have been playing around in the, uh, the Outpost Builder or, like, the Furniture Builder, there's, like, modular furniture you can make, like. And imagine if we had some, like, curved couches here. Like, it's tile. Why not, you know? Who cares if there's no seatbelts? If, you know, decompression pulls you out through the, the window, you know? We, we want style. We don't care about health and safety here. But anyway, that's just a suggestion. Anyway... We're going to take this up and see how she goes. Um, if I remember correctly, flying the Mako, uh, it was quite impressive. I mean, there's not a lot of weight to the vessel. It's got those engines there. Let's take her up. Now, the, the only one thing I will say, one of the benefits of those engines is that... Oh, my engine is a bit... One of the benefits of those engines is you can upgrade them to... I think it's the... There's a version of these engines that allow you to get 180 thrust, which is very good like that basically means you're the fastest ship out there but aside from that i prefer the relodyne engines because they look better so we're gonna really quickly just gonna jump here for a minute because i need to fix the engines all right so here we are in the ship <clears throat> so just got everything fixed uh so as always i have a perk that uh, increases my power by five i'm just gonna really quickly show it i don't normally but just in case so here it is here, Anatronic Fusion. It gives me a max uh, perk. It gives me five extra power. So for this review, we're not going to be using those five power. So we've got a decent amount of power to play around with. We can basically put like equal in each. So weapon wise, we've got a pair of those lasers mounted on the starboard side. And then we've got those ballistic weapons mounted port and starboard. We'll do a quick speed test. So base speed, I'm assuming it's gonna be 150. Yeah, 150, it makes sense for a ship this size. Uh, boost speed of oh my this is fast so boost speed of 600 which obviously like a lot of ships like that's kind of where they top out but if you noticed you hit 600 like halfway through the boost meter those engines are, i'll give it to them they don't look the nicest but they're very efficient for boosting we do a quick agility test here so quick pitch yeah this thing is agile i remember this i mean it makes sense because like i said it's a small ship and you're overturned and then we'll do a yaw that's like easily like a 10 and then again, it's like a 10. Roll, of course the roll's a little bit slower. All right, so we're gonna head back down to the planet now and just do a teardown. All right, so here we are in the teardown. We've got on three sections. So on the top, we don't have any habitat modules. We have the R3000 Alpha Grav Drive A-Class, nine power requirement, 23 jump thrust, which gives us 28 jump range in the current configuration was giving us 30 earlier but that might have been that might have been because of um let's see could have been a perk let me see if we have any that just real quick but we can just pump it up to 30 there's obviously going to be some there so let me just see here so this is a relodyne r3000 i know there's an r4000 yet we have an r4000 here so this requires starship design too it costs an extra 3k and it gives us uh, same requirements but it gives us seven more jump thrusts so gives us 30 in this current config so that's a straight upgrade there 
For the shield, we have the Deflector SG40 Shield Generator from Sexton Shield System, A class, 6 power, and gives 550 shield health. Now, I know for a fact there is a better shield. So if we go down, we can go up to... So yeah, we can go up to 60 here. And as you can see, it jumps from 550 to 860. Three extra power, and it's an extra 6k. Now, it requires Starship Design 4, which... The thing is, Starship Design 4 is not hard to get, but it can be a bit tricky for some people. Now, something I did notice here... This one also requires Starship Design. See, something to look out for. I'm only starting to realize myself. If you normally with these perks or these like these uh like say modules, they go up in tens, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. But if you see them go up in five, usually they're slightly better. But I'm trying to wonder what makes this different. Yeah, I've I've no idea what would make them different. Like they're the exact same. Um this requires more power, same class, less shields, less hull. It's a bit weird, I don't know. So yeah, that's a upgrade path with that. And then for weapons, we have an, a mounted on a horizon weapon mount. We have a pair of these Singe 4 megawatt lasers by LightSight. A class, uh, 1500 range, 3.49 fire rate, and 22 shield damage with 4 max power. Now, if you're flying a ship like this, early game you're going to be strapped for power. So what I would recommend doing... For these weapons, I would recommend swapping them out. They're not bad weapons. They're quite, they're quite uh, useful, and they're 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 kind of they're nice looking, aesthetically pleasing. But I'd swap them out for a pair of these here, these dragons. Um, so these here, uh, they cost. A, they're a lot cheaper. They're one k instead of eight k, so you could basically afford. You could make some money on this. They, same class, they have 1,200 range, so 300 less range. They have the same fire rate. Now, instead of doing 22 damage to shield, they only do 12 damage to shield, which is, you know, it's a lot less, but power matters early game. So I'd swap out these and basically slap two of these on their place. And then for the other aesthetic piece at the top, we have the Tayo Cowling Fort. Middle of the ship, we've got the Samurai Cockpit from Tayo, uh, 200 cargo, hull of 5, and cruise base of 2. And then behind that, we have the Tayo Storeroom, 1x1 um, one one top beat. And then we have the 370T Stellarator Reactor A-Class from Amandon, 23 power. Requires Starship Design of 2, and it's 17k. Now, we can obviously, we can upgrade that. Now, if you want to stay in the same, like, kind of, like, styling of this reactor, do we have it here? Yeah, we can go up to 380. So, 380 is... See, it's an extra 3 power. It costs an extra, like, 8k, and it requires 4 starship design. So, you could do this, but 3 extra power is not worth it for the amount of play. You want this bad boy here, the Spheromac DC-202. Uh, it costs 33k, so double the price, but it gives an extra 10 shields. So just to show you, we can slot that bad boy in there. Bob's your uncle. Phenomenal. I'd recommend this immediately. <clears throat> anyway. Oh, whoops, didn't we do that? And then for the engines here at the back, we have a pair of these White Dwarf 3010 engines from Relidine. A-Class, 3 max power. 17 670 engine thrust and 2490 maneuvering thrust now they're the lowest of the rail dime. so i'm going to show you what i was talking about earlier with the engines so if we go to them here yeah okay so this this engine here so you'll notice it increases the thrust this requires tier 4 it increases the thrust by 3k up to 20.4k and the maneuvering thrust, it only goes an extra 150. But if you watch the, mo the movement speed, it jumps up to 180. So that's, you know, if you want, like, speed, there's your speed. Now, I'm not a huge fan of those ones. I'll show you the ones I use. They're probably not going to have them in stock. Of course you're not going to have... Oh, they do have them in stock, but they're B-class. Okay, that makes sense. So these are the ones I would use. You notice how they actually fit the aesthetic of the craft. Now, they are B-class, which means if you're going to use this, you're going to have to use a higher class reactor, which can be kind of problematic. But you could definitely fit one in, but that's just an idea anyway. I'd recommend um, 
at the very least, if you have the available perks, I would recommend putting on these for that extra speed. I'm gonna put back the original ones. Perfect. And then we have at the front here for the oh weapon wise, sorry, we have uh, two of these Mauler 105 EU auto cannons from Horizon Defense, A class, 960 range, 6.65 fire rate, 14 hull damage, and four power. Now, once again, these are not bad. These are quite effective, but early game, if you get this vessel, you're going to be kind of trying to conserve your power as best as possible. So I would recommend slapping on two of these bad boys here. These KE... Oh, shoot. Sorry. These uh, KE-20 cannons from Ballistic Solutions. A-class, 960 range versus... the well, same range. They have less fire rate, but they do 17 damage as opposed to 14 damage, and they only use 3 power. So just swapping the weapons out, you're basically saving yourself an extra four power, which is, you know, that can be used to power a more powerful shield. And then for um, for the aesthetic pieces again, we have two of these pinpoint landing gear from Tayo. They give two thrust, and we have two of these Tayo engine starboard braking thrust. And then there's a port. And then on the bottom here, we have the Tayo control station 2x1 mid. That gives us the four crew capacity. We have the Shipbed Landing Bay 200. We have a pair of these M10 Ulysses HP3 tanks, which are completely useless. And then we have the Hope Tech Docker. Now, what I would recommend swapping these out for... Let me show you real quick for fuel tanks. So if you, you want to get above... You want to get above... Um, above, like, 200... Uh... Fuel. So what you could do is you could use some of these. These ones are a hundred each, and you can slap them on there. It makes the profile a little better. They're also what are they? Yeah, they're not much heavier. There you go. There. I'm actually gonna put the the full ship together real quick just to showcase. Um, I'm gonna pull these out, and we'll add. So yeah, you can slap some of these on here, and they would increase your increase your um, thing by. They, <clears throat> they would increase your, your fuel by 200. Now, you can go a little bit bigger, which I would probably recommend going with. These here are a lot bigger, but they give you 420 fuel, which is more than enough fuel to go where you need to go. Now, they do require starter design too, but, you know, it's not, not, not a bad thing. Now, another little trick here. So, there's not much cargo on this bad boy, but I'm going to show you a little trick. Now, this is this is a, a glitch, technically. I've done a video on it. If you want to check it out, just check up one of my merge glitches. So, storage is a bit... We don't have much storage on this, right? So, we're going to do something about that. Now, if, if you notice where we are currently, there's not really any room to snap storage. But there's a little technique you can do. So, what you do is you move that landing gear, and then you go to your cargo... Now, you can use various different types of cargo. Um, I would probably recommend some of these smaller cargo, like these ones here. So basically, all you want to do is you want to snap them there. Like, you you can't. The, the technique, the way this works, is you, you can't cover both these snap points. So I'm just going to put this here. And then when we go to put this back, it's red. But if we flip it and flip it back and then drop it, and then you click it, and it's on now. It's going to go red. There you go. You have to fiddle with it a little bit to let it go green once it goes green. And now you notice how you can't see it at all, but you have extra storage. Your cargo has jumped to 600. And we can do the exact same thing on the other side. We can add another one of these here. Like so. Flip it. Drop it. Grab it. Just double check. And once again, now there's unattached modules somewhere. That is this turret here. See? The other turret accidentally moved the turrets. And now the ship is completely flying. Now we lost a bit of mobility here, which, you know, is a bit problematic. But like I was saying, if we're going with the upgrade path, we're going to really quickly put on the actual engines. The thing is, this ship is small. You want it to be fast. Like, you want to have that max, you know? So if we slap some of these bad boys on here, like, like so. And then slap another one here. So we're sitting at 79 mobility, which some people might not like. They might be like, eh, it's a bit, you know. So, what I would recommend doing is potentially, so what we'll do is, now this is, this is going to be a bit finicky. We want to try and 
maintain as much space as possible. So I would swap out the shield generator. So this one here, this is around the same price. And it's basically like the same as this one here, but it's better upgrade. And what I would do is I would slap this bad boy on top here. Actually, we're going to do another little technique. So we're going to put this here. So we hide the shield and then we're going to bring this in. And we're going to flip it. Now you can still see it, but it's not too bad. You can, we can color it in. We'll color it real quick. Let me grab it. And let me just color it the, the color. There you go. Perfect. Oh, whoops. Now what we can do is we can add some more engines. So what I'd recommend doing is now that we have this slot available, we can looking for the fuel. Where is the fuel? I was trying to play a ball. Just give me one moment. Yeah, so I was, I was trying to find out like a, a staff point. So basically you can move these. See, they are here. You can basically move these down here and snap them on to the... You can snap them on to the, the little side pieces. Now, just for kind of... For, for, for like... Just to make it a bit more streamlined, what I'd probably recommend doing is having... Let's delete these. I'd probably put one both sides just so that the weapons are kind of dispersed out a little better. Like so. And then that basically frees up this top section. Now what you can do to get a little bit more is you could snap two more up here. Now it's it's going to look very funky obviously. But it would give you max mobility and max speed. Now you could also technically but it would look a bit finicky you could swap out the fuel if you don't like the fuel being there and we could put them down there so i'm just going to showcase that real quick all right so i had to fiddle a bit they didn't have the pieces i wanted here so what i did is i basically swapped out the bigger fuel tanks for these smaller ones now they're only 200 but they're still enough to kind of get the job done now as for the weapons the um i was just fiddling around here so Currently, I don't have access to the piece I would need, but there's a piece by Tayo that looks like this, but it's basically like a hard point. You can put this up here like so, and then you can snap weapons onto it. So I would snap a laser weapon up on top. It would sit like that. And then that would basically be your weapon configuration. You'd have a single laser there, and then you'd have the two cannons there. Now, that's obviously if you're just going the route of having, you know, you want max mobility and stuff. Obviously, we could also upgrade the grab drive, but I didn't upgrade it. Let me actually upgrade the grab drive real quick just to showcase what we're working with. This, obviously, this upgrade, it's it's, it's kind of optional because you might not want to have those engines. You might want to just kind of stick with, with you know, the, the original engines. So we're going to remove this, and we're going to replace this. And what, is, what do we jump up to? Yeah, we jump up to 25. Let me see. Is there any... What is this one? This one is... How much is this one? The year 27? But it looks like that's the best we're going to get currently. Now, obviously, if, if we went up to B-class, you would get more, but then it, you know, it's not really an A-class vessel. Yeah, that's just some suggestions on the upgrades, on how you... If you want to do it, you know, if you want to try and keep the mobility up as much as possible. If you don't care about the mobility, obviously, it doesn't matter. Yeah, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll put it back to what it was. But that was a review of the ship, guys. Hope you liked the video. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys have flown this or if you've flown the Mako or if you've made the Otter, the version I have made. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this sort of content. And uh, also check out some of my other reviews. Bye-bye.